Hells Angels bikey gangs is behind shootings in Adelaide's northern suburbs. Three Hells Angels members accused of that shooting on Sunday that injured seven stood in front of a judge today. Hells Angels clubhouse seizing gym equipment which could help crack the case. And now months later police say they have arrested several people tied to the Hells Angels. The Hells Angels are one of the world's most notorious outlaw motorcycle gangs. Founded in California in 1948, the Hells Angels are known for violence, drug trafficking, and other criminal activities. In this video, we'll discuss the top 10 most dangerous members of the Hells Angels and their impact on the history and culture of outlaw biker gangs. It's important to note that not all motorcycle clubs are involved in criminal activities and that many people who ride motorcycles do so lawfully and responsibly. With that said, let's look closer at the Hells Angels and their most dangerous members. Number 10. George Weathern George Weathern was a former member of the Hells Angels Oakland chapter who became vice president of the chapter due to his friendship with President Sonny Barger. Despite leaving the club in 1970, Weathern remained in contact with many of its members. Weathern's involvement in crime began when three bodies were left on his property near Ukiah, California. It was believed that the club had purchased the property and put it under Weathern's name to use it as a burial ground for the bodies. Two of the bodies were Hell's Angels prospecting members attempting a coup and were strangled after being given spiked coffee. Weathern was not believed to have been involved in the murders, but he had left the keys to the ranch with William Mitten, to whom he owed a debt after allegedly shooting him while in a drugged state at a party in 1969. Police raided the ranch and found drugs, weapons, and bodies. Weathern was arrested along with his wife, and a search of the property continued for a week as police believed up to 12 more bodies could be buried there. Weathern then turned state witness and received immunity in return for disclosing the location of the bodies on his ranch. He testified in court against Hell's Angels members allegedly involved in the murders. Weathern's life took a tragic turn when he stabbed pencils into his eyes in jail in 1972 while sharing a cell with his wife. He was placed in the witness protection program with his wife and two children after testifying against the Hell's Angels. Weathern's current whereabouts are unknown. He has written a book titled Wayward Angel, The Full Story of the Hell's Angels, that provides insight into his life with the Hell's Angels and finally turning state witness and testifying against his brothers while going into witness protection. Number 9. Alan Passaro Alan Passaro was a member of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club who was involved in the slaying of Meredith Curley Hunter Jr. at the 1969 Altamont Free Concert, where the Hells Angels were hired to provide security. As the Angels became intoxicated and the crowd grew restless, violence erupted and numerous fights broke out. By the time the Rolling Stones took the stage in the early evening, the mood had taken a decidedly ugly turn as numerous fights erupted between angels and crowd members. Later, Hunter climbed on top of a speaker box and got into a scuffle with two Hell's Angels. One of the angels punched Hunter and chased him back into the crowd, where four more angels descended upon him. Hunter returned to the front of the stage, visibly upset, and drew a revolver from his jacket. Armed with a weapon, Passaro ran at Hunter and stabbed him five times, taking his life while Hunter's girlfriend, Patty Bredehoft, stood nearby. Passaro was arrested and charged with murder for Hunter's death. Still, he was acquitted of self-defense after the jury viewed footage from the concert showing Hunter drawing a revolver and pointing it toward the stage or in the air. Over the years, there have been rumors that a second unidentified assailant had inflicted the fatal wounds, and the police considered the case still open. In 2005, the Alameda County Sheriff's Office officially closed the case, concluding a renewed two-year investigation and dismissing the theory that a second Hell's Angel had taken part in the incident. The Rolling Stones stated that they were unaware that a slaying occurred during their set. In the Gimme Shelter documentary, Jagger notices the commotion in the crowd and threatens to end the performance until a stagehand pulls him aside and informs him about someone with a gun. The film then cuts to Jagger viewing raw footage of the incident for the first time. Mick Jagger commented on Hunter's death in a 1995 interview with Rolling Stone publisher Jan Wenner. 
expressing how awful it was to have had this experience and how awful it was for someone's life to have been taken. Shortly after Hunter's death, his mother, Altha Mae Anderson, requested that Altamont Raceway be turned into a public park to prevent any more wrongful deaths at Altamont. Alameda County officials later voted to allow the raceway to continue to host races, but barred future concerts there and restricted the number of attendees to 3,000. Alan Passaro drowned in Anderson Lake in southern Santa Clara County on March 29, 1985. The police said the death is kind of suspicious, although foul play was never confirmed. Passaro is buried at Los Gatos Memorial Park in San Jose, California. Number 8. Paul Eichheide Paul Merle Eichheide, a stockbroker by day, was also a Hells Angels motorcycle gang member. In October 2001, Eichheide, along with fellow Hells Angels Kevin J. Augustiniak and Michael Christopher Mesa Mike Kramer, was involved in the murder of Yvonne Garcia. A 44-year-old mother of six, Garcia had verbally disrespected the club and its members while intoxicated during a party at the Hells Angels Clubhouse in Mesa, Arizona. They loaded her into the trunk of a car and left her in the Arizona desert. Eichheide was arrested in 2003 on drug trafficking and racketeering charges, including counts of kidnapping and homicide stemming from the 2001 incident. After his arrest, the judge placed Eichheide on federal pretrial release with electronic monitoring because he had a small prior criminal history and was holding a steady job. However, he removed his monitoring bracelet while awaiting trial and fled the country. While on the run, Eichheide allegedly obtained a fake passport and a new identity. He even changed his appearance, putting on some weight, growing a goatee with the beard part down to his chest, and shaving his head. Fifteen years after initially fleeing the country, Eichheide was found in Buenos Aires in 2011, where Argentinian authorities had imprisoned him. Eichheide fought his extradition to the United States for seven years, seeking support in Argentina. However, his legal options were exhausted, and he is now being held in the Maricopa County Jail. Number 7. Michelle Jinx Genest Michelle Genest, a former Hells Angels member, was involved in the Lennoxville Purge in Quebec, Canada, which resulted in the deaths of five members of the gang's now-defunct Laval chapter. The victims included Guy Louis, Chop, Adam, Jean-Guy, Brutus, Geoffrion, Laurent, Langlais, Viau, Michel, Willy, Mayrand, and Jean-Pierre Mathieu. Two other members of the Laval chapter were also supposed to be murdered that day, but failed to attend the meeting. A sixth man linked to the Laval chapter, prospect Claude Coco Roy, was fatally shot by Jeunesse two weeks later on April 7, 1985. During a coroner's inquest, it was revealed that 41 members of the Hells Angels Montreal, Sherbrooke, and Halifax chapters were present in Lennoxville when the men's lives were taken. The victims were wrapped in sleeping bags and weighed down by cinder blocks and weights before being dumped in a river. This incident came to be known as the Lennoxville Massacre and was expected to signal the beginning of the end of the gang's presence in Quebec. However, the Hells Angels surprisingly became more robust in the years that followed. Genest was granted full parole at 51 on March 3, 2010, after serving a life sentence for slaying Claude Roy. He had left the Hells Angels in 1994 while serving time behind bars. During his parole hearing, Genest admitted that Roy's life was taken for not following the Hells Angels' rules against consuming hard drugs, but also because the gang suspected him of being a police informant. Genest informed the board that he was trying to extract information from Roy when he died. Number 6. James Brandis James Ezekiel Jim Jim Brandis was a feared enforcer and the Oakland Hells Angels chapter vice president. He was known for his involvement in numerous criminal activities, including drug trafficking and racketeering. In November 1977, he was caught in possession of a pound of narcotics and other contraband, including a police radio and a device for detecting surveillance equipment. When he openly spoke to Rolling Stone magazine in 1978, he stated that he did not take orders from anyone in the streets and would not take them from Sheriff's Office narcotics detective William O. Bill Zerby, who had caught him with contraband. Things took a deadly turn when Brandes became involved in an attempted murder of San Jose Police Department Sergeant John Cracked in February 1977. Cracked survived an attempt on his life when a bomb detonated near his car. 
Brandes was charged with the attempted murder of Cracked and other crimes as part of a racketeering case against the club in June 1979. Brandes was also charged with the murder of fellow Hell's Angel Ray Dale Stork Kefauver, who had been scheduled to testify for the prosecution in a Redwood City murder trial and was found in a ravine near Port Costa on June 16, 1974. He was also implicated in the murders of Hell's Angels associate Alvin Lloyd Prater and his wife Mary Ellen, who was discovered by the side of a road near Sunol on August 24, 1974, after being fatally shot two days earlier. Despite being implicated in four crimes, Brandes was never convicted. Brandes and Vallejo Hell's Angels chapter member Kenneth Owen were charged with the attempted murder of Zerby. Ultimately, Brandes took his life in prison in 1994, while Owen died on July 4, 2016. Number 5. David Wolf Carroll David MacDonald Carroll, who was also known as Wolf, was a notorious Canadian outlaw biker and gangster who was a member of the elite nomad chapter of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club in Quebec. He was personally recruited by Maurice Mom Boucher and was placed in charge of drug dealing in the Laurentians. He became Boucher's most trusted hitman, participating in at least 15 murders. Carroll was present during the Lennoxville Massacre of 1985, in which five Hells Angels members' lives were taken. He was charged with first degree for his actions during the massacre, but was later acquitted in 1987. Two other members of the Halifax chapter were also charged and acquitted. Before moving to Quebec, Carroll worked as a pimp in Halifax, demanding 40% of all the earnings made by the local escorts. He was arrested with seven other members of the Halifax chapter and charged with living off the avails of prostitution. Carroll and the other accused were imprisoned and sentenced to one year. In 1988, Carroll was again charged with first degree in connection with the death of a young man in Dartmouth who owed a drug debt to the Hells Angels. Once again, he was acquitted. He later moved to Quebec in 1990, where he settled in Morin Heights with his common-law wife and their son. In 2001, Carroll was charged with 13 counts of first degree as part of Operation Springtime. At the time, he was believed to be in Ixtapa, Mexico, and an extradition request was filed with the Mexican government. Carroll, however, disappeared along with another Hells Angels member, André Chouinard. The Canadian authorities believed Carroll had at least $1 million in a numbered bank account in Antigua. Carroll is believed to have fled to Brazil, a country that has no extradition treaty with Canada. He was rumored to have been seen in the West Indies between 2001 and 2009. The Interpol notice on Carroll stated that the Hells Angels have chapters in more than 20 countries, and information suggests that Carroll has frequented a number of them, including Brazil, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, the United States, and countries in South America and Europe. The last sighting of Carroll was reportedly in Australia in 2012. Number 4. Michel Langlois Michel Langlois, also known as Sky, was born in 1946, and developed a passion for flying. He even purchased his own aircraft and obtained a pilot's license, which led to his nickname. In his early 20s, Langlois joined the Popeyes Motorcycle Club, Canada's largest French-speaking and second-largest outlaw motorcycle club behind the Satan's Choice Motorcycle Club. He quickly became a prominent member of the club, alongside President Yves Le Boss Buteau and hitman Yves Apache Trudeau. In 1977, the Hells Angels MC patched the Popeyes MC, making it the first Canadian chapter for the Hells Angels. Langlois became a Hells Angels Montreal chapter member and eventually rose through the ranks, becoming the Canadian national president of the club. However, his tenure was subject to controversy. In 1985, Langlois was also involved in the Lennoxville Massacre. Fearing arrest, Langlois fled the country for two years, ultimately returning to face charges and being convicted of being an accessory after the fact to murder. He received a two-year prison sentence for his involvement. Langlois was also involved in drug trafficking and was charged with importing and conspiring to import cocaine in 1998. He pleaded guilty to three different drug cases and received a five-year prison sentence along with a $20,000 fine. In 2015, Langlois was charged as part of Operation Shark with taking part in a general conspiracy to commit murder linked to the Quebec Biker War.
As a result of the operation, the Canadian government confiscated the land on which their original Montreal clubhouse was located. Number 3. Robert Chico Mora In the late 1970s, the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club was looking to establish a foothold in Arizona, but they were met with resistance from other biker gangs in the area. That's when Robert Chico Mora stepped onto the scene. He was the leader of the Dirty Dozen Motorcycle Gang, and he saw an opportunity to align himself with the Hells Angels. Mora was known for his brutality, solidified by his manslaughter conviction in 1980 at 24. This crime and his involvement in other illegal activities resulted in his reputation as a dangerous criminal. During his time in prison, Mora honed his skills as a boxer and became a Golden Gloves champion. He left prison at 6 foot 3 and almost 300 pounds of solid muscle, intimidating those around him. His rap sheet included convictions for possession of narcotics, possession with intent to distribute, misconduct involving weapons, and a conviction for wearing body armor that was later reversed. In 1984, Mora and his Dirty Dozen gang were patched over to become part of the Hells Angels. The move was significant, as it gave the Hells Angels a strong foothold in Arizona and helped them establish a dominant presence in the state. In 1993, he was arrested and charged with the murder of a rival biker gang member. He was eventually convicted of the crime and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Mora's last few months were spent living in a small house in the neighborhood, where he amused himself by playing video games and tormenting his pet, a black chihuahua named Chica Ruka. He was known to hang the poor animal by a rope, with only its feet touching the ground, whenever it did something he didn't like. Mora and the Dirty Dozen were linked to a range of illegal activities, including aggravated assault, meth distribution, counterfeiting, and even murder. His crimes and involvement in the gang ensured his reputation as a dangerous and violent individual. While he may have been friendly and playful with his chess partner, his criminal past and associations with the Dirty Dozen paint another picture of who he was. Despite his past, Mora is revered by Hells Angels members. He is seen as a legend within the club and is often spoken of in hushed tones. Mora passed away on January 1, 2014, at the age of 58, due to complications from diabetes. Hell's Angels members rode for 20 miles to honor him during his funeral procession. Number 2. Eve's Apache Trudeau Eve's Trudeau, also known as Apache or the Mad Bumper, was a notorious figure in organized crime. Born in Canada in 1946, he may have been small in stature at only 5'6 inches and 135 pounds, but he was a force to be reckoned with. While working at Canadian Industries Limited, Trudeau's involvement with explosives began in the 1960s. He was trained in explosives and later used these skills to orchestrate several bombings. This experience proved valuable as he rose through the ranks of the Popeyes Motorcycle Club in the late 1960s. In 1977, the Popeyes were patched over by the Hells Angels MC, and Trudeau became a member of the Laval chapter. During his time with the Hells Angels, Trudeau gained a reputation as one of the most dangerous members of the group. He is widely regarded as the most prolific murderer in Hells Angels history, admitting to committing 43 murders between September 1973 and July 1985. The tally of 43 murders consisted of 29 with guns, 10 with bombs, 3 by physical assault, and 1 via strangulation. The northern part of the St. Lawrence River became unofficially known as the Hells Angels Graveyard due to the number of bodies dumped there over the years. Trudeau was involved in several high-profile murders, including the slaying of Robert Cote and Brian Powers. He also tracked down and took the life of Jeanne Desjardins, the grandmother of ex-Hells Angels member André Desjardins, who was attempting to help her son. He then went on to take the lives of both André Desjardins and his girlfriend Berthe Desjardins. Trudeau narrowly escaped death in a rehab facility during the Lennoxville Massacre in 1985. He was expelled from the club while in rehab, but his troubles were far from over. Frustrated by cocaine addiction and his suspicion that his fellow gang members wanted him dead, he became a government informant after the Lennoxville Massacre. In exchange for cooperation, he received a lenient sentence life in prison, but eligible for parole after seven years. Trudeau was granted parole in 1994 and given a new identity, Dennis Cote. 
However, he was arrested in March 2004 for sexually assaulting a young boy and received four more years' imprisonment. In 2007, Trudeau learned he had cancer and was transferred from Archambault Prison to a medical center, where he passed away in 2008. Despite the passage of time, he remains one of Canada's most notorious and prolific serial criminals. Number 1. Maurice Boucher Maurice Mom Boucher is a Canadian criminal and former Hells Angels motorcycle club leader in Quebec. Born on June 21, 1953 in Quebec, Boucher had a troubled childhood and became involved in criminal activities early. He dropped out of school at 15 and turned to crime to support his drug habit, committing break-ins and armed robberies. He was first imprisoned in 1975 for an armed robbery and later arrested for a series of home invasions with his brother in 1978. In 1982, he joined the white supremacist motorcycle gang, the SS, which later evolved into the Hells Angels. As a gang leader, he showed charisma and ability and became known for his violent tactics and involvement in the drug trade. It was May 1, 1987, when Morris Boucher became a notorious Hells Angels Montreal chapter member. He quickly made a name for himself within the gang, known for his cruelty and cunning. In 1995, Boucher formed a nomads chapter of the Hells Angels, with the rumors circulating that he planned to corner the drug market throughout Quebec. This move put him in direct competition with rival biker gangs, leading to a long, bloody war that would take over 162 lives and injure hundreds more. This cemented his reputation as a fearsome criminal, and the violence he orchestrated left a trail of destruction and bloodshed throughout the province. As police ramped up their focus on the Nomads chapter, Boucher increased the pressure on law enforcement through intimidation tactics, but his reign of terror would eventually come to an end. In 1998, Boucher was acquitted of ordering the murder of two corrections officers and the attempted murder of a third. However, police obtained an informant, Stéphane Gain, who stated that Boucher indeed ordered the murders. In May 2002, Boucher was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. While serving his sentence, Boucher was reportedly expelled from the Hells Angels MC in 2014. But it wasn't the only trouble he faced behind bars. In 2015, he and a fellow inmate were charged with attempted murder after allegedly stabbing another prisoner. Since 2002, Maurice Bauche has been held in the Special Handling Unit, a super-maximum federal prison located in saint anne des plaines just outside of Montreal. The Special Handling Unit is part of the Regional Reception Center. He passed away in 2022 from cancer while incarcerated at the Palliative Care Ward. Despite his conviction, Boucher remains a figurehead for the Hell's Angels, with many still in awe of his power and influence. But for those who suffered at his hands, he will forever be remembered as a ruthless and remorseless criminal who terrorized the streets of Quebec. The Hell's Angels have a reputation for being one of the world's most notorious outlaw motorcycle clubs. The ten members we've discussed in this video represent just a tiny fraction of members who have been involved in criminal activities, and it's important to remember that not all members of the club are involved in such activities. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more of our videos.